test, test. Hello, hello and welcome everyone.
Uh, okay, good morning, good day. Uh, I just wanted to check if you hear me well. Yeah, okay, so first check, positive thing. I'm really glad that we start with uh, something positive. Um, I just want to uh, say that we will wait a little bit longer for uh, final panelists to come here. But while we are waiting, uh, I just want to check a couple of things. Are you ready to, you know, just raise hands for some of my questions? So you don't have to stand up, but, some, but just raise your hands if the answer on my question is yes, okay? So, I am from Croatia. Okay, a lot of Croatians. I'm not from Croatia. Okay. I am from European Union. Uh -huh. I'm not from European Union. Okay. Uh, I'm up to 25 years old. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm student. Okay. And uh, I... Um, I'm first time in I event. Oh, lot of us, nice. Okay, this was the short exercise just to check who is here and to get you a little bit more, to get to know you a little bit more uh, and also to spare some time. You see how smart that was. <laughs> um, okay, now I promise I will be more uh, serious and start to uh, start with this panel, okay? Uh, so, hello once again. Uh, welcome to the panel that is called the, house, uh, the Effective Housing for Young People, Effective Housing Policies for Young People, Wishful Thinking. So, it's really long and interesting uh, name and we will find out why is it wishful thinking, okay? So, before we start, I just want to outline a couple of I wouldn't say rules, but guidelines. So, if any time you can raise your hand and ask a question. Is that okay? So, for everyone, uh, if you have some questions, raise your hand. Also, uh, to give our panelists a little bit of break, I will ask you to ask some questions, okay? So, you know, for people not to speak all the time, but also, you know, to sit a little bit and uh, rest while you propose your questions, okay? Uh, this is the only guideline I have for this panel, so I think it is quite clear, okay? Uh, my name is Branimira, maybe it's also to outline that, and I'm, going for, uh, I'm coming from Creation Debate Society, and I will be your moderator for today. Uh, I will just shortly present our panelists now, and they will talk a little bit more about themselves later. So, next to me is Miha Zupančić from Ladinski Svet Slovenia. Here is next to him uh, Angel Mitko, youth UN delegate from Bulgaria. Here is Leo Staković from Croatian Youth Network. And last but not least, or least but not last, is Miroslav Marković, uh, deputy mayor of city of Varaždin. And in the, in the end is our translator, Gordana. Uh, she will help us with the translation. Okay. Uh, so I will just invite all of you to present yourselves, maybe to start from the dead side now, okay? I think it's running. Uh, I will talk on Croatian because I have many terms in my speech that is better that we have good translate. Uh, evo, ja sam Miroslav Marković, 51 godina, zamjenik gradonačelnika grada Varaždina, doktora znanosti Nevena Bosilja i moj dio posla između puno toga ostaloga uključuje i rad sa mladima. I na početku bih želio reći da smo mi u gradu Varaždinu kao nova izvršna vlast od lipnja 2021. godine. 
Good morning. My name is uh, Miroslav Markovic. I'm deputy mayor of the city of uh, Osijek. Of oh, Varaždin, sorry. And I'm the deputy of Osijek is a bigger city of Varaždin. And I'm the deputy to uh, Neven Bosil, who is a mayor. And uh, uh, I have a lot of work uh, under my other obligations. I also have youth work. Um, we are a new city government. We've been in office since June 2021. Pa evo i rekao bih da smo od samog dolaska, jer smo na neki način, ja sam pripadnik Socialdemokratske partije Hrvatske i naša posvećenost upravo socijalnim mjerama, mladima i svemu tome dolazi do izražaja naše politike u izbornom programu su upravo bile zelena tranzicija, okretanje prema mladima, energetska tranzicija grada i svega ovoga što smo zatekli. Jedna od prvih stvari koje smo napravili i možda je to gledajući prošlost, možda jedna od najbitnijih koje smo napravili je da smo unutar gradskog vijeća oformili odbor za mlade. Poseban odbor za mlade koji vodi jedan od najmlađih vijećnika u Republici Hrvatskoj koji je došao sa liste SDP-a, gospodin Lovro Lukavečki, koji je ujedno i predsjednik kluba vijećnika našeg kluba i zajedno sa Savjetom za mlade i odborom za mlade smo napravili jako puno ovih godinu i pol dana, a vrhunac tog rada je upravo dolazi sada na gradsko vijeće, a to je akt, znači to je strategija razvoja mladih, znači plan za mlade koji smo donijeli, znači mi znamo da Hrvatska nema nikakve strategije posebne za mlade, ali grad Varaždin je odlučio da ide bottom up, a ne da čekamo da nam država nešto da, jer državam obično je vrlo spora i neefikasna. I mislim da je to dovoljno za početak. Since we came into office, I belong to the Social Democratic Party of Croatia. We had a strong commitment and our social measures and youth were part of our policy. Uh, together with uh, uh, green strategy and uh, youth and energy transformation. Some, um, uh, some of the first things we did in the city and most uh, important things I would say is um, that in our city council we founded uh, the council for youth or youth council. And we also have the youngest representative uh, in the whole of Republic of Croatia. His name is Lovro Lukavečki who is uh, chairman of that council. Um, in our... Um, okay, so is our, in our SDP faction in the city council, uh, in our youth council and youth committee, uh, we've done a lot in the past one, of, one and a half years. Um, and one of the most important things I would say is that we're about to adopt a new strategy uh, for youth a new development plan for the youth here. And uh, it will be the first one in Croatia because the Republic of Croatia does not have one. So we uh, decided to take the bottom-up uh, approach and not wait for the country, for the, for the state, because it's very sturdy, very slow. So we're going to be the first one to do it. Hvala vam gospodine Markoviću. Leo, molim te preuzmi. Oh, I'm also speaking in Croatian, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I just said uh, thank you to Mr. Markovic and Leo, please take over. <laughs> thank you so much, Branimira. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Leo, or Leo, whatever you wish, and I'm originally from Osijek. Uh, although I live for the past five years in uh, the city of Karlovac and uh, loving it there, I'm really loving it. Um, what can I say about myself? So I'm 27 years old, uh, currently the president of the uh, managing board in uh, Croatian Youth Network, in Croatian Mreža Mladih Hrvatske. And uh, I don't know, by profession, I'm, I'm originally a uh, kindergarten teacher but I've been active in the civic society for almost 10 years now, and hopefully I will be uh, able to transfer some of my knowledge or advocacy uh, power 
to inspire you and motivate you today. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Uh, my name is Angel Mitkov. I'm from Bulgaria. I'm 23 years old. I'm studying law in my final year now at Sofia University. Um, I am also the Bulgarian Youth Delegate to the United Nations and just to give you a hint what we are doing with my colleague, uh, we are representing young people from Bulgaria to the United Nations and we are participating in the ECOSOC and in the General Assembly Third Committee. So uh, I have been invited as, uh, in this role uh, and I can also say that I really like to travel, I like photography and I'm really happy to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah, hello everyone. I am Miha Zupancic and I am coming from Slovenia, from the National Youth Council of Slovenia. And I'm the president. Um, I began in the youth sector as an activist at the local student club. Uh, soon this was, I was so amazed by this civil society, by the youth organization that I went full in. So I went to the national level, to the umbrella organization of the student clubs. I was president there, and I was also active uh, at the local level. I was in a lot of commissions and the local youth councils and so on and so on. And now I am where I am at the end of my mandate as a president of the youth sector of the National Youth Council. Um, and National Youth Council Slovenia represent uh, youth people from age 15 to 29 in Slovenia. Uh, there is uh, around 300,000 of young people. And uh, yeah, that's it mostly. Okay, thank you for this first round. Do you have any questions? You see, this is how it will look like. I will ask you that a lot. Uh, but can I ask you for a short round of applause for our panelists for a start? Okay. Thank you. To lift the spirits a little bit. Uh, behind me on the screen, they will, there will be something that is called Mentimeter. Have you ever heard about it? Mentimeter? Okay. You see how it looks like? So, uh, this will be also a chance to put the questions in writing form. If you're not really super comfortable speaking in front of a lot of people, if you have questions, you can put it there. So, you go to menti.com, you put these uh, numbers, this code in menti.com, and there you can po post your questions. Is it clear? Okay. So, uh, let's start with a short introduction of what we will talk about today. So, as I was saying, we will talk about effective housing policies for young people. Why? Because having a home has a direct implications on health inclusion in society or the decision to start forming a family. So, it's very important to have a home if you want to start a family. On the other hand, rents and house prices in European Union have continued their steady increase. So for the last years, uh, housing is very expensive. And in some European uh, Union countries, there is, that is the, one of the main reasons why young people do not leave their parental home uh, until very late uh, age. So for example, uh, European Union um, like average when young people are leaving home is around 26 years old. But in Croatia, Croatia the average age is 33. So you see, uh, you st uh, stop being a young person uh, until you leave your home. So this is not a good statistics, but we are here to discuss why is that. So what else except uh, being expensive, what are the reasons young people are not leaving their parental home until late age? Okay, uh, what, and we will discuss what uh, social and affordable housing providers, European Union, local authorities, national authorities can do about that. 
Uh, and also we want to, uh, you know, not to talk, talk only about bad things or what is not good, we will also talk about some positive or good, uh, ex uh, good examples. Uh, oh, I lost the word. Good practices, good examples. Okay, so uh, for the first uh, question, I will ask uh, Miha. So what is the state of housing uh, for young people in Slovenia? And I will uh, ask the same question all of you. So next uh, Angel, next Leo, and Miroslav, I will to uh, talk with you a little bit more on a local level, okay? Uh, you don't have to uh, turn it on, it works. Uh, this one, it's not working, so I will give you mine. Thank you very much. So about the state of housing in Slovenia, let me paint you a picture with saying it's horrible. It's terrible, but this is the after effect of neglecting the housing policy for the past 30 years um, in our country. Uh, okay, so what are the challenges? Let's begin with uh, supply and demand. There is a high demand and there is low supply. This is um, because we don't have enough legislation and our um, ministry, our government doesn't have a lot of own uh, re uh, apartments or house that they could rent to young people or to older people. And that is the problem because if you have a high demand and low supply, the prices for renting and even for purchasing uh, go up. Uh, then we have some group of people that see housing like, 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 like that see. see. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Do, do, do. Yeah. All right, I think it works. Uh, okay, I think I wanted to say that we have some people that are looking on the housing through the eyes of uh, opportunity to earn some money through the um, investment eyes, you know, and they bought a lot of apartments because people who has money pr probably gets uh, credits and with credits uh, they can buy even more apartments and they are count counting on that that they will live from the rents of people who cannot afford to buy a house or an apartment. Next thing is, which I already said, that we have a lack of um, housing legislation. We don't have a law that would, for example, say that uh, empty apartments should be taxed more, that the uh, physical or company persons uh, should be taxed more if they have multiple apartments or houses, and this is because of the lack of political will. Don't ask me why we don't have political will to do that. Every time I ask my colleagues is, is censored that our, uh, our politicians just don't want to accept that and we are trying to enforce that they would accept that for the past 10, 15 years. And hopefully with the new government, I hope we are on a good way to do that. Mm, the next thing is our mentality. I don't know how do you feel about apartments and flats or houses, but Slovenian people mostly want to own their own houses, their own apartments, because we are looking that A, it's loss of money if I pay for rent, B, when I get old, what if some, somebody throw me out of my apartment and when I'm 80 years old, I am not, I'm not gonna be able to go for a search for a new apartment and we see that like uh, investment for our uh, time when we will be old. And then I will move to the next problem is that now credits are getting expensive, young people can't get credits uh, because of like preca precariat, precariat, because they are precariat workers, because they don't have enough salary, and even if they could, no credits are really, really uh, expensive and mm, a lot of people just don't want to credit themselves for 30, 40 years to afford uh, a house or apartment. 
Mm, housing is also connected with students, uh, especially in um, university centers. And the problem is that we don't have uh, enough student uh, uh, room, uh, student rooms, uh, cap cap capacity for students, and that they are on the market, and they are and they are also part of why there is so high demand on uh, university centers. And I will slowly conclude with that that in Slovenia in the past five years the rents for apartments for uh, purchasing prices went up for around 40 to 50 percent. For example, my brother 10 years ago bought uh, his apartment for 70,000 euros. I am currently looking to solve my own housing problem and the apartments in my, in my city, which is like 50 kilometers from Ljubljana, are now at around 140,000 euros. 100 and and sorry, I don't have that kind of money, and therefore I'm still living at my parents' house. And we, with my girlfriend, we are trying to get an apartment for the past six months. But even if we could afford one, there is no uh, supply on the market. Therefore, the situation in uh, Slovenia is not good. It's getting improved because the civil society as National Youth Council in Slovenia was advocating this issue for the past 10 years and only now the situation got so bad that decision makers are uh, trying to resolve that. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Miha. Uh, before I give word to Angel, I just want to check from the audience, uh, what do you think? Is housing very expensive in your countries? If you think, yeah, very expensive, thumbs up. If you think, uh-uh, and not expensive at all. Please, let's see. So, uh-huh, uh -huh. for some, it's here, here, okay. Also, this is, you know, for panelists to see what is the opinion of the audience. Also, do you think uh, young people can afford uh, housing? Yes, no, okay, thank you. Uh, any questions? Okay, then Angel, can you talk a little bit more about uh, how it is in Bulgaria, similarities, differences? Yeah, thank you. Actually, the situation is really almost the same in Bulgaria as in Slovenia. The only difference is actually that we have a lot of offer on the market because in the last uh, five years there are many new buildings that were constructed in the big cities because of the many people that want to have investments, they invest in property, as he said. Um, in Bulgaria, like in Slovenia, people like to, have, to own their apartment or their house because uh, they see that renting is a lot of money. Um, that's why people tend to buy apartments all the time, like uh, even if they don't need it, if they have some money, they invest it in property. And that's why uh, there were a lot of new constructed buildings, half of the apartments in my uh, regards are empty, or they're just buying them to rent them after, but uh, there's actually no one to rent them because in Bulgaria, sadly, we have a demographic crisis, so our population is going down, but we're having more and more new buildings, which is a bit of a paradox. And the other paradox is that uh, with the high uh, level of new constructions, we're still having uh, a raise of the prices. For example, in the last six years, uh, in Sofia, the prices of the property have doubled. If uh, six years ago, one apartment with three bedrooms were, uh, was uh, 60,000 euro, now it's more than 1,000 euro. And uh, of course, young people cannot afford this. Maybe a really small portion that are working in the IT sector, they can do that, but for the most of, it, of them, it's just impossible. Um, we have in the big cities uh, many student rooms and actually I think this is one good thing that almost every university has its uh, dormitories and they are offered to students uh, who cannot afford to live on, in, in apartments and renting one. So uh, student dormitories are really cheap, most of them uh, really, really, really cheap. This is not a problem for students but uh, for people that are not students or uh, they try to work and be students. I don't know if you have that in your country, but in Bulgaria we have two types of students, the student, full-time students, and these who are just uh, 
students and workings, so these ones do not have right to rent the dormitories. For them, it's difficult to find place. Uh, as my colleague said, in Bulgaria, we also don't have a housing policy. Actually, everybody's talking about uh, property and uh, free market, but nobody's talking about housing policies. And to be honest, uh, when I was preparing for this panel, I was uh, shocked to say that in Bulgaria we don't have a national housing strategy up to date, which is really sad. And I hope that in the future we will try to uh, to make one. Uh, maybe should I, should I ask something more? Because I can talk a lot, but I need some guidelines. <laughs> Okay. Um, if you feel like you're concluding your yeah, speech, it's uh, just uh, perfectly fine. So we will pass okay. on and then we will continue next time. Um, before Leo starts to talk about me again, uh, there is a lot of students here, or there are. So can you please thumbs up who is living in student dormitory? Okay. Okay. Not, not so many. Uh, is it expensive for you? No. Okay, so it's good to have available student dormitory uh, that is not very expensive. Okay, thank you. Questions for Angel or Miha? Okay. I just wanted to say to so, 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 Slovenia will resolve this huh? problem. About uh, the okay, just a second. Should I give it or? Uh -huh. Okay. I just. Hello. I just wanted to say if Slovenia will resolve that problem in 10 years, Croatia will resolve in 30 years. That is always, you know, we need to follow Don't up. steal my lines now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Leo. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, yes, please, before you uh, ask a question, say your name and where you're from, just so we get to know each other, okay? From Croatia. Okay. Dominic, there is a question. Can you pass on the mic? So I'm Marco from Croatia, and this is a question for Angel. You said that uh, student dormitories are very cheap. I'm interested, um, how do they look like? Because we have student dormitories. Some of them are cheap, but some of them can be semi-expensive. And depending on the price is what you get because some student dormitories look amazing. It's like a five-star hotel, but some look like dumps. Like you wouldn't live there. It's better off to live at home. So I'm interested how do the student dormitories in Bulgaria look like, the very cheap ones. Yeah, uh, as I said, almost all dormitories are owned by the universities and the state, so we actually don't have private dormitories because people that don't want to live in the dormitory, they just rent an apartment. Uh, in the big cities, uh, the dormitories, uh, there are some that are renovated and look good, and some of them are really miserable, uh, to be honest. And uh, when the university decides which student goes where, they are classing them regarding their uh, grades in school in the first year. If you're a good student, you go to the good ones. If you're not so good student, you go to the bad ones. And if you don't like it, you just move out and find uh, some, someone somewhere to rent. <laughs> That's what it Yeah, so it's like. actually quite similar. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Okay, thank you. More questions at this point? Okay, so let's continue. Leo, can you talk a little bit more about how it is in Croatia? About the Croatian context, yes, of course. Well, uh, the lads have already said almost all of it, so nothing for me to add. Even the audience has chipped in. Thank you so much. Um, well, I can only argue now that it is worse in Croatia, worse than in Slovenia and in Bulgaria together, if I might add. So, Micha, you said that uh, in Slovenia the government is, is at least uh, acting, like trying to do something better, right? In Croatia we don't have even that. Like Deputy Mayor has already stressed out, we do not have uh, a national youth program in Croatia for the past five years now. It's going to be a round number uh, while, when we reach 2023. And uh, that's just one of the steps, uh, one of the documents that we are lacking, that we are missing in Croatia. Uh, and that could actually help us uh, bring out some, some quality uh, youth housing policies or any youth policies at all. 
what I would stress out is the precariat that Micha has mentioned. Yeah. Uh, do you know what precariat is? Okay, whoever knows, raise your hand. Cool, okay. I did not know, I had no idea what that means uh, by the, the beginning of 2021, so please don't feel stressed or ashamed. Precariat is any form of, of unsecure work, labor, right? So that means student jobs, that means uh, agency work, platform work, like Vault, Globo, and so on. So any form of contract that does not provide you security. Yeah? And without that security, with the contract, you can't obviously go to a bank and get a loan, get a credit, in order to get your own uh, housing situation solved. Uh, just to stress out the numbers again, so it's 77% of young people in Croatia aged 18 to 34 that still live with their parents. Yeah? 77%, now that's a great number and at least one thing we can be proud of to be first in Europe. Yes, for several years now though. <clears throat> and uh, I think I would stop here and maybe open the floor for some questions. If there are some. Okay. Also, I remind you for the Mentimeter, I do expect some questions there, so please don't disappoint me. Uh, any questions that you want to say out loud? Okay, we have one question there. Please introduce yourselves. Uh. So, uh, my name is Sebastian, I am from Zagreb. Do you think it's shameful that it's 35% or more of young people to ages 18 to 35 that live with their parents? Because I think it's more of a mentality thing of Eastern Europe in general compared to like Scandinavia and Western countries where, for example, Sweden, they live alone at like 17 and it's not just the mentality but also the economic situation and maybe the fact that Eastern Europe was under communism for half a century. So, I mean that develops down to economics as well. So, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sebastian. Uh, thank you for this question. Now, the mentality. Hmm. Okay. Let's do a real, real simple uh, questionnaire here now. Who in the audience still lives with their parents? Excellent. Okay. Lower your hands, please. Do you really want to live with your parents? Raise your hands. Who wants? Raise your hand. Okay, Sebastian's hand is up. Thank you, Sebastian. No, I think, I think of course, there is something in the mentality part, but uh, honestly, I don't think, I, I, I believe, I strongly believe that the mentality of all of us in Europe, nevertheless, which, which part of Europe we come from, has, has been changing uh, throughout the years. And by 2022, I doubt any of us really want to live with their parents uh, until they turn 34 or more, right? And uh, I'm not really sure I got that part with communism, but okay, maybe we can discuss that in, in the parking lot. Less opportunities, okay, yes, understandable. Um, but although we still have really, really uh, a, a low number of opportunities even today, right, don't we? And uh, of course, the economics and uh, so on, uh, but we can't just, you know, ah, it's the economics, it's the inflation, we can't just really, you know, uh, uh, lower our heads and voices because, you know, 
that that's the situation. No, this is the time for our voices to be heard, right? To communicate and to articulate that, that, that this housing problem really is a huge problem for all of us young people in Croatia. It's not simple at all to find your own house flat. Now, Micha, you also said, you know, part of this mentality is that we want to own our house or apartment. But many, many researchers uh, actually say that we don't really want to buy anything right away. We don't want to buy anything before we turn 30. We want to try out different things. We want to live in different cities, perhaps. What if we meet someone, we, fell in, we fall in love in a different city? You know, we want to be able to be uh, mobile, to move around, not just in our own country. Now, to remind all of you that uh, even Croatia uh, just entered Schengen area as well, but the entire Europe as it is, we like moving around. The Erasmus numbers show it, that we like mobility. And uh, maybe that would be my comment for now. Uh, did I answer your question, Sebastian? Are you satisfied? So, so? Okay, we, we can talk a bit more later. Okay, uh, so Miha, you have something to add and then we'll proceed with Miroslav. Thank you, Leo. I, I, I have a short replica for, your, for you. As fellow Slovenian, uh, we like to compete and be ahead of Croatia on all levels. Therefore, I need to say, no, Leo, we are worse than you at housing policies. <laughs> Let me just add that that we also have tourism, uh, which is um, getting more and more, more and more tourists. Of course, you are very touristic countries, but at least you are building new apartments, new stuff for tourists. We just use the, the housing, the apartment that we have. We move the, the people who live in that apartments out and we rent them to tourists. And the next thing is also the uh, foreign investor invest, investments like uh, even before the war, a lot of Russian and Ukrainians uh, bought uh, houses in Slovenia because of like investments. And yeah, that's why we are wars. Okay, this is like spontaneously uh, become competition. <laughs> so uh, let's find a way to compete who is better in something more positive in the future. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we learned a lot about uh, some reasons why housing is unaffordable, unaffordable for young people. Uh, before uh, we start with Miroslav, uh, that he will give us some insight how it translates to the local level. We have some questions, five of them. Uh, but I do propose to proceed with questions a little bit later, so Mr. Miroslav have something to say. So please, how it I translates think, to the I local level. I think that Leo and Miha are full of optimism. <laughs> yes, maybe we need more optimistic <laughs> point of view. Pa evo, ja bih, s obzirom da je okvir u kojemu govorimo o affordable housingu je vrlo širok, a obuhvaća puno stvari i od makroekonomije do nekakvih sitnih stvari koje se dešavaju. Recimo ja nekako to gledam iz svog čak i osobnog aspekta, jer ja imam dvije kćeri koje su jedna 25 godina, a znam, star sam već polako, ali ne dam se, a druga je 19 godina. Znači jedna živi u Rijeci i radi već u Rijeci jer je završila fakultet tehničkih teh, brodogradnje i diplomirani inženjer strojarstva i ide na doktorat i zaposla se na Institutu za konstrukciju u Rijeci, a mlađa je recimo u Varaženu i ide za medicinsku sestru, vidit ćemo kud, kud je poslije. Što želim apostrofirati? Uh, I think this uh, framework in which we talk about affordable housing is quite wide. Uh, it spans everything from macroeconomic things to very tiny things. And uh, talking from my own uh, situation, from my own point of view, I have two daughters, 25 and 19. Yes, I'm old. Um, the older one is living in uh, working in Rijeka. She uh, has a degree in um, shipbuilding and mechanical engineering, and she's going to do her PhD now. And the younger one is living in Varaždin, and she's studying to be a nurse. 
Znači, mlađa živi s roditeljima, još je rano da ode, nije još ni krenula na fakultet, a starija živi sa svojim dečkom već jedno vrijeme i oboje rade i žive kao podstanari u rijeci. E sad, možemo gledati to sa stanovišta turističke zemlje, da studenti koji žive u stanovima na moru moraju biti, su izbačeni u toku sezone bez ikakve mogućnosti da, se, da im se omogući da ostanu u tim apartmanima. To je jedan aspekt. Drugi aspekt je apsolutna nemogućnost dobijanja kredita. Mi imamo nacionalne nekakve stvari koje možemo koristiti. Znači, to je poslovi, stanovi, stanovi uz poticajnu stanogradnju. Ali također uvjeti za dobijanje njih su dosta otežani. I tu isto, recimo, ja mislim da oni gotovo da nemaju šansu dobiti stan u rijeci. Da bi mogli kupiti jer to su bodovi pitanje kreditne sposobnosti i svega ostaloga. So the younger daughter who's 19 uh, is still living with her parents is uh, too early for her to leave uh, their apartment. She did not even start to study. Uh, the older one is uh, living with her boyfriend uh, in a rented apartment in Rijeka. Um, Uh, when we talk about a tourist country, such as Croatia, uh, the apartments on the coast uh, on the, uh, are even worse because uh, a lot of people are thrown out of their apartments as soon as the tourist uh, season starts. And there's a no way that they can keep those apartments. Uh, so that's first uh, thing, uh, no way to stay in those apartments. And the other uh, hand, the thing is that there's no way that can get a credit. Um, it's very difficult. Uh, there was, there's a so-called so POS building in Croatia, and it means social housing, um, but uh, there's not enough of it, and the, uh, how to get such an apartment is getting uh, increasingly difficult. So uh, there's no way you can get uh, such a social apartment in Rijeka. Uh, there, there is a point system, which is uh, difficult, and uh, you also have um, don't, uh, to be able to raise a loan, to get a loan, and it's really difficult here. I'm going to take the example of my own, because I know how it is for young people. And because of all that, we took a system of the city of Varaždin in the city of Varaždin to the whole ono što je tema ove konferencije, odnosno ovog panela, je nešto što je, mislim da je i Miha rekao da ne postoji dobra legislativa za dugoročni najam, povoljni dugoročni najam stanova u Hrvatskoj. Znači ne postoji zato što smo već počeli pregovore s nekim, s jednom komercijalnom bankom, neću reći ime da ne reklamiram, koja desetljećima u Austriji radi i izgrađuje takve stanove sa vrlo niskom maržom profita, jer se smatraju i društveno odgovornom bankom, makar znamo što su banke i na koji način funkcioniraju, ali nisu svi ono, profiteri, već žele uložiti i dio novaca koji stoji na računima, mi imamo ogromnu ušteđevinu u bankama, žele investirati i reinvestirati taj novac u nešto što donosi malo marža profita, možda 2 do 3% samo, u suradnji sa lokalnoj zajednicom, odnosno gradom, konkretno Varaždinom, gdje mi želimo njima omogućiti dati im infrastrukturu, znači napraviti cestu, dati zemljište, a oni bi po nekakvom principu javno-privatnog partnerstva, nekakvog joint venture sa gradom, napravili te stanove i ono što je sada ključni problem je upravo to na koji način provući tu cijelu priču zakonski, a da, nemamo, da nismo sprečeni od strane nacionalnog zakonodavstva koje praktično to nije riješilo. I gave you the um, examples of my own daughters uh, because I wanted to show you that I really know the situation. Uh, about the situation in uh, the city of Varaždin, we wanted to take a systematic approach to this problem. 
um, the topic of this panel um, is uh, um, what Miha said, that there, there's no good uh, legislation. There are not uh, affordable long-term uh, agreements that can be made. Uh, but um, we started um, negotiations with a commercial bank. I don't want to mention the name because I don't want to publicize them. Uh, you know, and um, but it's a bank that has been building uh, social housing for decades in Austria, and uh, it uh, does it with lower uh, profit margins uh, and interest margins. Uh, they try to be socially responsible not only make profit. Uh, we all know what banks are about, but not all are really only about profits. So uh, they would like to um, uh, do business with us. Uh, we would like to, uh, they would like to invest in social housing uh, with uh, maybe a margin of about two to three percent. Uh, what we, uh, of the, the city of Varajdin would do, we would, uh, um, make the infrastructure, we would uh, build roads that would lead to, su lead to such social housing, and we would provide the land. Uh, and uh, they would try to do a kind of uh, private-public uh, partnership, a kind of joint venture, um, and build such a social housing. The obstacle that we have is actually the national legislation, uh, which has not resolved such cases. A upravo iz razloga nacionalnog manjka politika za mlade, općenito oko politika građenja i svega toga, odlučili smo zajedno sa gradom Rijekom u principu ići u tu priču da zajednički vidimo kako stvoriti model koji možemo izgraditi takve stanove, pokušati paralelni proces, da mi pripremamo infrastrukturu, znači mi Konkretno imamo dvije lokacije u gradu Varaženu gdje ćemo sljedeće godine na jednoj već tokom 2023. imati pripremljeno, znači kompletno gradilište, sve, sve infrastrukturno pripremljeno za jednu takvu izgradnju, a paralelno ćemo sa našim pravnim timom pokušati unutar okvira zakona o gradnji, odnosno e, prava na građenje na nekakvih, da damo pravo na građanje, da li naše tvrci, da li banci po javnom pozivu ili nekome, tko će dobiti to na 50, 60, 70 godina na mogućnost gradnje, da oni to izgrade i da se kroz taj model naprave stanovi. Znači, to je model koji bi bio isključivo i jedino namijenjen za dugoročni, povoljni najam stanova. Uh, so, uh, to add up uh, to what was previously said, uh, the obstacle is the lack of a national legislation regarding youth policies and construction um, policies. Uh, so, we are trying to do it together with the city of Rijeka. We're trying to create a model uh, how to construct such apartments. We are going to uh, prepare the infrastructure. Actually, we already have two locations. And in 2023, we will have uh, one of the construction site prepared, the whole infrastructure and everything. And in parallel, our legal team is uh, trying to see how we can pull it off within the Construction Act, that is to kind of create such a, such a thing as the right to construct, the right to build whether it's going to be through tenders or through a call for action. So we are trying to create a model which will make it possible for us to build within the next 50 or 60 years, uh, according to this model. And uh, the, the social housing, the housing that will be built, will be exclusively for long-term uh, affordable rent. Upravo taj dio je onaj gdje bismo mi željeli da se može poboljšati i mobilnost. Znači, ono što, što su i rekli priješnji panelisti, netko ne želi ostati možda u gradu Varaždinu, dođe za poslom i onda dobi bolju priliku u Rijeci ili u Karlovcu ili u Osijeku i može 
preći u nekakav drugi stan. Dok ne stvori nekakvu financijsku stabilnost, da si uopće može dozvoliti kupnju, a s obzirom na ove astronomske cijene nekretnina, jer vjerujte, cijene nekretnina rastu zbog inflacije, zbog prelaska u euro, pa se izlače novci iz čarapa, iz banaka i kupuje se nekretnine da se spasi vrijednost novca, što opet otežava mladima kupnju, jer jednostavno oni ne mogu si to dozvoliti. Ja ću vam opet reći, ja sam kupio osobno, znači mi smo kupili POS stan prije 2002. godine u Varaždinu, znači po povoljnim uvjetima, to je bilo prije 20 godina, za 724 eura kvadrat. Znači sad se stan, evo jučer sam saznao da se stan u mojoj, znači to je sad nevjerojatno kad neko veli, mislim to je, sada se stan prodaje u našoj zgradi, evo slučajno sam jučer saznao, od 40 i nešto kvadrata za skoro 2200 eura kvadrata. Znači, to je puta tri. Nama plaće nisu išle puta tri, nama su troškovi išli jako gore, ali plaće ne prate taj tren. I mladi koji ulaze nas u područje rada, čak i sa dobrom plaćom, relativno dobrom plaćom za naše uvjete, ne mogu si priuštiti kvalitetan stan za kupnju. Jer vama gledajući da želite zasnovati obitelj, vama nije dovoljan stan od 30 kvadrata, 40 kvadrata, treba vam barem 60 dvosobni nekakav da bi mogli živjeti kvalitetno, a za to vam treba sad već skoro 150-200 tisuća evra, što je apsolutno nemoguće dobiti čak ni kreditno zaduženje i ako ne otvorimo kanal povoljnijeg najma, oni će, mladi će jednostavno ostati za uvijek kod roditelja, ili će ići u nekako podstanarstvo pod koje kakvim lošim uvjetima. So uh, this is um, uh, through such um, uh, building we want to actually improve uh, the mobility of young people. Uh, there may be young people who um, come to Varaždin because they get a job here, but uh, actually they get a new, better offer later on, and they don't want to stay in Varaždin. They want to go and live in Rijeka, Karlovac, or somewhere else. Um, but um, un uh, until they can afford their own apartment, that's the only way they can live, uh, to rent an apartment at, at, at an affordable uh, price because uh, the prices of, uh, of real estate are really astronomical. Uh, it's uh, due to inflation, it's due to introduction of euro here, uh, and uh, also the thing that some people um, get the money that they had stashed away in you know, stockings or somewhere at home, and they want to buy real estate because they think they will uh, save the value of their money uh, by buying real estate. Just a comparison, uh, Mr. Markovic bought an apartment, a social, um, socially built apartment in 2002. And back then he paid 724 euros per square meter for his apartment. Now he just heard that there is an apartment in his building that is being sold. Um, it's about 40 square meters or something, and they're selling it per 2,000 meter uh, 2,000 uh, euros per square meters. So it's times three, three times as expensive as it was 20 years ago. Uh, the salaries did not go up uh, by th three times. Uh, the costs did, did increase a lot. Um, so it means that young people who enter the labor market, even if they do have good salaries, they still cannot afford um, to buy an apartment like that. And, and if they want to start a family, they cannot buy a 30 or 40 square meter apartment. They need at least 60 square meters if they want to have a baby and so on. And uh, they would need uh, 150 to 2,000, uh, 200,000 euros to buy such an apartment. It's really impossible for young people. So the only channel, the only way uh, to solve this problem would be to build such uh, buildings uh, that would be for uh, long-term affordable rent. And uh, if uh, it does not um, succeed, uh, the only two possibilities would be that young people would stay and live with their families forever or live in rented apartments at really, really very bad conditions.
Okay, before you start, can we conclude this one with the yes. last round? Uh, reći ću samo za kraj da, je, da smo mi upravi odlučili da i dalje podupiremo uh, POS stanove. Evo upravo ovih dana uh, ćemo predati ključeve od 56 znači poticajno napravljenih stanova jeftinih gdje je gdje se također mlade obitelji mogu javiti, postoji sustav bodovanja i e, mislim da je metar kvadratni tog stana 1400 eura, tisuću, što je apsolutno najniža moguća građevinska vrijednost, ja mislim, u ovom trenutku i ta cijena više ne može ni opstati što se tiče novih, novih takvih stanova. Znači i dalje ćemo gurati model post stanogradnje, znači čak e, ti stanovi mogu ići uz najam uz mogućnost otkupa nakon nekog vremena, e, mogućnost kupnje i treća, ta, taj ključni sad moment koji pokušavamo raz, razviti i nadamo se da ćemo ga uspjeti e, kroz naše pravne timove složiti, jer ova vlada, ja mislim da nema namjeru u ovom datu to riješiti, e, da pokušamo doći do ovog principa rješenja kroz dozvolu o građenju da počinjemo graditi stanove za dugoročni najem. Evo, to je možda za početak. Yes, uh, to conclude, um, this is why we are so determined to support uh, the social housing, the building of social housing. Just these days, we are going to hand over 56 uh, such, uh, social uh, apartments to young families mostly. Uh, there is also a point system according to which they can get it. At the moment, the price of such uh, social apartments uh, is 1,400 um, euros per square meters, and it's the lowest possible price at the, at the moment. It's also not um, going to stay like that because uh, you cannot... Uh, you, it cannot stay due to all the costs in the market and so on. Um, but uh, we th really think that such social housing, this POS as it's called in Croatia, is the, the answer. It could also be possible that such uh, apartments or social apartments would be rented for some time and then uh, the, the, the people would have an opportunity, a possibility to, to pay them off uh, with, in time. And the third thing that we're still going, going to continue to support is this... Um, um, building uh, of social housing uh, through the model that uh, Mr. Markovic explained at the beginning. We, the legal team is going to further negotiate uh, the possibility to build, um, uh, to get such uh, construction permits and uh, build the housing for long-term rent. Samo da objasnite pojam socijalnog, jer mislim da se tu malo miješaju pojmovi. Znači, ovi stanovi koji se radi u sposobnog radnju nisu socijalni stanovi. Oni su stanovi klase, praktično A klase. Grad Varaždin ima preko 300 ili 400 socijalnih stanova. Socijalnih stanova za ljude koji si apsolutno ne mogu, znači to su ljudi koji e, nemaju primanja, koji, znači gdje mi kao, znači to su socijalni stanovi gdje oni praktično skoro da ni ne plaćaju nikakvu rentu, nego žive u takvim socijalnim stanovima. Ovo su stanovi koji su, ja bih rekao da bi baš bio bolje ono affordable, znači da jesu pri, u bolje cijene, ali nisu socijalne, nisu za socijalne kategorije stanovništva. Znači to dobiju ljudi koji stvarno imaju kreditni kapacitete da to mogu plaćati i samo da ne, tu da tu distinkciju napravimo da ne bi ispalo da je to sad nekakva baš ono, za nekoga ko si baš ne može priuštiti. Ne, mora imati mogućnost da to može plaćati. Ne? Yes, um, that is, uh, Mr. Markovic wanted to make it clear that these uh, POS uh, apartments are not uh, apartments for social cases, uh, for people who cannot afford to pay anything. Um, uh, they are A-class uh, apartments, really good apartments. Uh, the city of Varaždin has about three to, uh, to 400 uh, social apartments, which are given to really uh, social cases, and they pay almost no rent, well, close to no rent. These are, the, the better term would be affordable, affordable 
uh, housing, um, and uh, those people have to be able to pay them off, to have to be able to get a credit. Uh, unfortunately, um, that's the shortcoming of my profession, that post apartments were always translated at social uh, housing. But yes, you're right. Uh, maybe I should talk to colleagues and maybe you should try to introduce such a term which would be affordable rather than social. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you for the perspective of what can be done on the local level. I think it's really a positive thing that the city of Varaždin pinpointed housing as a real issue for young people in the local community. Okay. Now you know what is the n my next question for you. Is there any questions from the audience for our panelists? So here and here and here. Oh, lots of questions. Please, volunteers, to get microphone. It was here, the lady. Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Dorotea, and I come from Osijek. Now, I have a question for Mr. Markovic, so should I ask it in Croatian or...? You can ask in English, yeah. In English. Okay. Uh, how many people applied for social... Uh, no, sorry, social affordable apartments? Uh, what are the uvjeti? And how do you control uh, the people in social, this is so slow, oh my God. How do you control people in social apartments? Hvala vam na pitanju. Znači, postoji unutar gradskih službi, postoji posebno povjerenstvo koje određuje kriterije za dodjelu POS stanova. Također postoji povjerenstvo i postoji pravilnik koji određuje kriterije za socijalne stanove. Znači, točno se u svakom trenutku zna i radi se lista prioriteta po bodovanju. Znači, mi smo imali, što se tiče POS stanova, evo za ove stanove koje smo sad stavili, prodali, ajmo reći dajemo ključeve, je napravljena nova lista gdje su se javile, mislim, jedno 150 stanova, ne znam sad točno, evo nemojte me uzeti za riječ, jedno 150-ak obitelji, što svega toga, i nakon bodovanja u koje ulazi i kreditna sposobnost, broj djece, jako puno kriterija je, se dobija rang lista po bodovima, koja je potpuno, potpuno transparentna, i onda se naravno podlači crta, ljudi biraju stanove po redu prvenstva, i dok to ne, dok se svi stanovi ne daju. I onda se sklapaju ugovore, oni moraju ići banci, onda i dobiti kreditnu sposobnost da bi to mogli. Što se tiče socijalnih stanova, također kontroliramo i radi se lista, svake dvije godine se lista ponovo radi, jer ako je netko koji je ušao u socijalni stan i ne plaća rentu, se zaposlio, dobio veće prihode, naravno da mora taj stan vratiti i mora ići u nekakav drugi stan. Jer to su stanovi koji su specijalno predviđeni za ajmo reći, ljude težeg imovinskog stanja, samohrane majke koje ostanu, recimo, bez posla, imaju dvoje djece i tako, mislim, različiti su razlazi. Tako da imamo i od branitelja nekakvih i ti stanovi su namjenjeni za tu svrhu. Ali u svakom slučaju, u svakom trenutku se to prati i radi revizija. Ok, just one hint, when you ask question, please stand up, because cameras cannot see you. Yes, thank you for the question. The city um, of uh, Varaždin has a commission that, um, um, special commission that has set the criteria uh, and uh, point system according to which uh, families or people can get uh, those affordable POS uh, apartments. There is a point uh, uh, list, uh, that, and, it court, uh, and it includes, uh, for example, number of children, creditability, and uh, many other conditions, um, and uh, they are ranked. And their ranking list uh, is totally transpar uh, transparent. So uh, according to the ranking, uh, they choose uh, the, the, avail the, the available apartments and uh, also sign agreements with the city and uh, buy them, actually. 
the same goes for the sociable, uh, uh, social apartments. It's also controlled and monitored. There's also a list which is reviewed every uh, two years. For example, if somebody has uh, got a job in the meantime and can afford another apartment, uh, they have to move out of that social apartment. Uh, and uh, it really regards um, uh, poor um, people or single mothers with two children uh, who are unemployed, for example, or some war veterans, so people um, who are really underprivileged, so to say. And uh, it's uh, strictly monitored and reviewed. Okay. Since we are in the last 20 minutes of our panel, uh, I will give guidelines to our panelists. Your answer should be short and simple because we have five more questions here. We have some questions on the main thing. So let's try to answer as many questions as we can, okay? So next question was here. Please stand up and introduce yourself and we will get you mic or you can use mine, no? Thank you. Uh, I will try to give a, a few short comments and also one general question in the end. Uh, so my name is Armin and I come from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, on that competition between Croatia and Slovenia, I'm definitely on the Slovenian side, uh, like because of my experience, because like I'm studying now in Slovenia. And actually, uh, when I went there for the first time, I got, I managed to get a room in, in Ljubljana after 81st, 81 requests. So 81st request was positive. Uh, that, that's, that was a, a very stressful period of my life, I have to say. So housing policies uh, are definitely needed in, in, in Slovenia. Uh, I wanted to refer to the situation in Bosnia and Herzegovina because believe me that you don't want to get in the competition with us. Uh, we do not have like, we do not even talk about housing policies at all because it's like, for the God's sake, why should you live alone if you're like 25? Uh, but I think that uh, I will use one actually good example that we have in, in our capital, Sarajevo, uh, where actually young, couple, young couples that are actually married for at least two years, they have the opportunity uh, to get 6,000 euros every year in order to get their apartment. So that is like some good example, let's say, that, that uh, we have in our, uh, in our country, even though like with the raise of the prices of, of, uh, of, of flats and apartments, it's not enough anymore. But uh, referring to that, I wanted to ask you, what do you think like that are sp like special steps uh, or beneficiaries that each country actually should have in order to make that uh, process easier for them, like what you said that you have in Varaždin, but what do you think that should be done in the, in the like, state level? Thank you. Change of government. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hello, do you want to? Uh, yeah, I can do a short one. Uh, thank you, Armin, for the question. Uh, my short answer would be, <clears throat> well, I don't have any Croatian examples, at least for this point, but there is one of Austria, of Vienna, uh, there was supposed to be another person with us today uh, from Austria, from Vienna. If there's anyone in the audience, please raise your hand and say hi. If not, that's perfectly fine. So what example do they have? So Vienna, as a municipality, owns around 50% of the apartments in the entire city, right? And with that, they are managing to lower the prices of any other apartment that is being let out for rent or is being sold, right? So that is one of, one, one, one good way, you know, to control, so to say, the market in your own city, yeah? And uh, also, I assume there is a certain way uh, with a commission or an act, a document of, of, of any sort of strategy, you know, uh, to determine who 
uh, has, has the advantage to get such apartments from the municipality. Yeah? Thanks. Um, uh, Angel, do you want to say something? Well, I cannot say anything in particular for Bulgaria because we don't have a good example, sadly. But I can uh, say what I have uh, <laughs> read recently on, on the internet. And it was uh, it was not fake news. It, I will I checked this. Uh, well, uh, the city of Paris is aiming to achieve 40% of uh, of all the apartments to be owned by the by the city of Paris, so that they can control us Vienna the prices and uh, be sure that. Uh, People that work in Paris really live in Paris and not uh, not just go 100 kilometers away to find the housing. So I think yeah, this is a, a possible solution to the city to own many as much as apartments as possible. Thank you. Okay, before uh, Micha, you answer, I want to check with the audience. What do you think? Is that a good way to help young people to afford housing for cities to own most of the apartments? So if you say yes, hands up. If you're not sure, you don't have to raise your hand. Okay, so it was a fast check. Micha? i be really short. I fully agree with what Leo said, and it, this, not, this is not necessary on, only on the local level. We also have a, a government or state uh, hounding funds who should own like 30, 50 percent of flats. And one other thing is uh, that the perception should change that housing is not an opportunity to invest, but it's a right. And this should be the change in the mentality. Because if we cannot afford uh, housing, we cannot afford to have uh, families, that, therefore the demographic changes, and so on and so on. So the housing should be the right, not an opportunity to uh, uh, invest. Thank you, Micha. Uh, we will take one question from Menti. Can we show one question from Menti? I think the first one was, was for Micha. How are you sure the next government will make the first step in solving the problem? Uh, thank you for the question. I give that uh, question a lot of thought during the debate. The, really, the only process or strength or leverage that we have is social, pre uh, is social pressure. Uh, in Slovenia, our government got elected in May. Uh, they got elected with the help of uh, civic organization, and they don't have a fanatic uh, voters, you know, who will vote for them no matter what they do. And uh, luckily for us, uh, we advocate the housing problem for the past 10 years. These uh, parties took this problem serious, and it was one of the main points in their campaign that they will build in the next uh, five to 10 years, 20,000 new Jauna uh, Naimna Stanovania. That's the term of, in Slovenia for what uh, uh, Deputy Major said before. And they know if they are not gonna uh, do that, uh, they are not gonna get elected anymore. Okay, uh, short and simple. If you don't do it, you're not elected. Okay, we have one more question in Menti for Angel. What is the average size of dorm in Bulgaria? So, so I think that somebody really wants to study in Bulgaria <laughs> with this question, so please, Angel, answer. Well, actually, they are quite small. Um, I have to admit that I have never lived in a dormitory because I live with my parents, surprise, <laughs> because I'm from, originally from Sofia. But um, I know that most of the rooms are for three people. Uh, some of them are deluxe rooms, so only for two. Uh, so it's quite small, but it's like... You can live there, it's not uh, impossible. It's just uh, surviving, I guess. <laughs> okay, so it's a permanent uh, choice you have to make. Yeah, well, you can always move out, but uh, you don't have another option. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, for the person asking the question, now you, you can reach me answer. after the meeting and we can talk more about that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, can we check another uh, one on Menti just to see what it is? Uh -uh. Okay, okay. Uh, I think that we already answered this one, so we will we'll mark, it, mark it as answered. So next one. Okay, how does housing affect the economy? Mm. I will leave a panelist to decide who wants to say something. Uh, okay, Micha. I will try to be really short again. Uh, I don't know how to say, kupna uh, moč, the 
possibility that people have to buy things. And there is a lot of difference if you give, for instance, in Slovenia, if you rent the flat, you give approximately one average salary for that. That's a lot. If you think that you, that the person who get uh, flats for anyhow, and they are not renting it, they have like one salary more. And uh, that affects economy uh, a lot because you can buy other things and you can even invest in other things. Maybe someone uh, should uh, answer. Anyone have to? Okay, so panelists are agreeing that you covered it. Okay, uh, we will take another question from the audience. I think that you already had a question, but I will just see if there is somebody else who wants to ask. Okay. I, I, okay, it's working. Uh, hi, I am Peter, I am from Croatia, and I have a question for Leo. So, we talked about housing on national level, and we talked about it on its local level. But what can we as individuals do about it? For example, I'm a high schooler now and I want to study in Croatia. And how can I maybe escape it or help myself with it so I don't get, you know, stuck in Varaždin? <laughs> well, have you tried joining the civic society? You might want to try it. So if you want to advocate for it really loudly and um, on a national scale, even on a local scale, uh, that, that's, that's the thing you do. You uh, turn to participation. Now, what you need to do is make your voice heard or the voice of other young people that you have with you in the right time and the right place, right? Now, the, the way to find out such information and where you can act, where you can write, leave your comment or whatever, I mean, even just by being here, you are doing a step forward. So congrats for the first step, Peter. Uh, is that enough for now? Yeah? Okay. Maybe we can continue the discussion later on. I'll be in the forest room. And we had another question over there uh, by the girl in front of you. I just wanted to add that I think there will be a lot of uh, additional uh, discussions after the panel, which is really cool. So, I'm Amina, I'm from Croatia, and I have a question for Mr. Markovic about social apartments. So, how are you 100% sure that people in need are getting the apartment because our country is famous for corruption and connections? So, what is the... 100% of the conclusion that person is need is getting the apartment. Evo moram reći da u Hrvatskoj zaista ne postoji 100% sigurnost jer i institucije koje prate neke stvari mislim da nisu neovisne u Hrvatskoj. Ono što smo mi zatekli u gradu Varaždinu nije bilo dobro. Znači, postojale su nekakve e, mogućnosti da se zaobiđe sustav kriterija. I pooštrili smo te mjere na način da smo uveli striktnu kontrolu izrade listi i stavljanje ljudi na te liste. Znači, u skladu s apsolutno s pravilnikom. Znači, naši ljudi su skloni kreativnosti, pod navodnicima, jel? ali smatramo da svaka iznimka u stvari ruši pošteni sustav koji, smo, koji pokušavamo uspostaviti. Naravno da ljudi imaju potrebu, ja bih uvijek rekao kod nas, ići preko veze, ali jedan put to mora stati. I mi smo napravili te korake da to stane, jer po meni nitko nema pravo dobiti stan ako ga nije zaslužio, odnosno ako nije o takvoj nevolji da ga može dobiti. I to je to. Znači pojačali smo kontrole, prekontrolirali sve slučajeve koji su te stanove dobili i na kraju e, napravili sad novu listu koja je potpuno transparentna i može se svakom to biti na uvid. Nije nikakav problem. Evo. 
Yes, you're right. Uh, there is no way to be 100% sure in Croatia. Um, and uh, a lot of times the int institutions that monitor it are not uh, independent. The situation that we found when we got into office uh, was not good. Uh, there were uh, many opportunities and possibilities to go around the criteria. Uh, so we actually uh, controlled the lists uh, and uh, made them stricter. Uh, how people get on the list to get social housing. And uh, uh, it has to be according to this rule uh, book, actually. Uh, um, uh, so uh, Croatian people are... Uh, kind of trying to be creative and uh, <laughs> tend to be creative. Um, so um, they um, try to get around the system and uh, they always will probably try to pull, pull connections. Uh, but it has to stop. Uh, we made the first steps for it to stop um, because... Um, uh, we think that it's the only right thing to do. So we made the control stricter uh, and we controlled all those who were on the list. And we created a new list and it's fully transparent and anyone can have a look at it. Thank you. Uh, I heard some comments from panelists, like in Bulgaria too, so I think there is a new competition in, a, uh, uh, in advance. Um, okay, we have time for two more questions. I will take one from Menti and one from audience. I will give uh, the floor for the person that didn't ask yet, so sorry. So can we get a mic there to the... Okay, and please can you put Menti so I can see the questions. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Lovro. I'm coming from Zagreb. Uh, I'm uh, obviously the only one who doesn't have any questions, but I just want to say something. Now, uh, as I'm listening to this whole conversation right here, I just want to say that I'm, I can say, pretty um, scared of uh, buying an apartment one day, uh, especially in Zagreb, where I'm from, because the apartments right there are really, really expensive. Um, and when I finish my high school, my salary will be like six to six and a half uh, thousand kunas, which is about 800 euros. And that's not too, too much. Uh, and now when I think about it, um, I can say that like when I buy an apartment one day, uh, should I live with someone else, like with my girlfriend or, uh, I don't know, maybe my brother or sister or anyone else, because my salary will not be enough to pay the rent or uh, to pay the credit for my apartment, because it will be like really, really expensive. Okay, so this was a comment more than a question. Okay. Uh, Okay, Leo wants to uh, add a comment to that and we will finish this round. Thank you, Lovro. Now, this is what we need. We need the voice of young people standing up. Thank you for the comment, Lovro. I mean, it's, it's potpuno na mjestu. Thank you so much. Okay, so we have to slowly close this panel. Uh, if your uh, questions did not get answered, I am sorry for that, but you always can approach our panelists and discuss a little bit more about situation in Slovenia, Bulgaria and Croatia and what can be done uh, to uh, help young people with the housing issue. Uh, for the last round, for, whole pa for all panelists, I will have one question and you can answer just with a couple of words. So the question is, is affordable housing for young people wishful thinking or it's really possible? I will try to answer this and also this question behind me. Uh, yes, it is, it is possible, but not under but not in this situation that we have. Yes, uh, the housing should be uh, the right. It could also be the opportunity or the investment, but there should be a legislation, as I said, that text those people, that those flats are uh, uh, properly taxed. And from that taxes, the government could found the housing funds who build new flats. Uh, and uh, I think this is a possibility 
because from what I heard, none of our countries does have a housing legislation, housing bills, and so on. And I think there is a lot of potential money that could uh, state spend for the uh, building new uh, housing houses. Well, uh, I think that right now housing policies for youth are actually wishful thinking. It is true, this is the present situation. But I truly believe that in the future, if we are active enough and really push the policy makers, uh, youth policies for housing can be real, uh, become real thing and uh, improve the situation for everybody. Nothing is impossible, okay? Especially if you get get in on it, yeah? Okay, so now all we have to do is become aware of this problem like Lovra did a couple minutes ago and uh, become aware that if we don't start changing things today from our perspective and our own possibilities, there, there, there actually won't be anyone else to change it for us, yeah? Okay. Uh, I will say that youngs are silent force. They are sleeping. They are in apathy, in depression, and they must woke up. Go to vote, go to your representative, make the pressure, make something uh, like we're doing here in Varazdin. We have participated participative budgeting for youngs, they do not so much. You must engage yourself, your friends, not only on social networks, in real life. I know that this uh, political scene, awful, awful, but you can make the change. I cannot do my job without you. You must give me your inputs. What should we done? Without this, we are doing nothing. But you have the force, use it. Okay. Force is in you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Markovic. So it's a two-way communication and effort uh, to make any policies work. So I would like to thank uh, all the panelists and all of you for active participation. I would all ask for applause, but not yet. I just want to quickly check with you how it was with you. Great. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. So now I ask for applause for a wonderful panelist. Thank you. It was my pleasure to do this uh, panel, and I invite K Christian to thank continue. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Branimira. Thank you very much, panelists. You are free to go. Uh, <laughs> you are also free to go to your next program. So if, you don't, if you don't have it, if you don't have it, no words. I, I'm loud enough. If you don't have it, you can use chill out zone, quiet room, EU corner, or whatever you want. Uh, please, you will see QR codes to give us feedback all around Arena, so please scan the QR codes and give us the feedback. <laughs> Thank you.